It's a 72 Plymouth Duster. It originally came out as a gold duster from the States. It's been in the country about just over three years, three and a half years. Came out with a little 360 and pretty much a little fun family car at the moment. Uh, between 13.9s and 14.2s, a little bit consistent. I've got no traction of no traction off the mark a little bit because the old tyres, they wouldn't even they fail the warrant and going to fail it again, I guess. The motor's a 360 crate motor. Yeah. They come out standard also at 390 horsepower. Uh, you just buy them off the buy them out of the crate. It's running just a little 650 double pumper. The, the gearbox has got a BMM shifter kit on there. Yeah, they came out at 1970. And this actually has a 1970 grill on it. It came out as a Bitsa car. In 72, they made a bunch of cars in California and this had a Bitsa grill and a Bitsa upholstery. And yeah, the only thing that's 72 on it is actually the lights. But it actually is a 72 car. There's only one other 72 in the country. Down guy down Hamilton's got a little straight one. Really nice. That's just a good, fun, clean car. Everyone needs one. Detroit make them tough. They're made to be abused. And Brent certainly gave the old duster plenty of abuse on the day. Now, is it just me, or is it compulsory that all blokes that own Mopars have a Mo stash? An exclusive offer for NZV8 TV viewers. Subscribe to NZV8 Magazine this week and you'll get a free picture disc DVD of John Carpenter's Christine in widescreen format. Based on Stephen King's best-selling novel about a homicidal 58 Plymouth, Christine is an automotive horror classic. Just text V8 to 244. Drag racing. Drive two cars in a straight line as fast as you can. Well, actually it's not quite that simple. Getting these cars to work properly on a drag strip is a real science. And the pre-season test and tune day at Fram Auto Light Dragway is a last chance for the top contenders to see just how all those off-season modifications and tweaks work in practice. The iconic Quartermaster Escort required more than a few tweaks in the off-season. Last time this car ran, we were here, the Fram Auto Light Racetrack, and we went through the traps at 140 mile an hour and threw it right out the side of the block. Oil under the slick, under the rear slicks, and the centre sideways into the bank. It did take a while to repair it. Now is it just a new block or replace the front end a bit, uh, the front clip on it, and a bit of chassis work, and it was there. Just, we're here now, bigger and better. It's a 498 big block Chevy, man. We do 940s, mid 940s, 140 mile an hour. Alan Lim originally owned it. 1974, I think, was his first time out in the track, and yeah, he's doing the low nine, so. It, it's, it's come a long way, mate. We've found it in the trailer in the back of Pukekohe there in the, in the garden. It was all just rusted and all just wrecked. So fixed her up and look where we are now. Old Dave Chung's old puppy loved the 56 twin turbo Chevy. That's, we love to beat him. It's a quick car. And they'll be hoping it's quick enough this year to take the Super Street title. It's always great to see new cars on the scene, especially when they're a top door slammer and they're a Camaro. Over 10 years in the planning and we started 18 months ago on the build. Today's about the crew learning their jobs, um, about us seeing if we can get the car off the, off the line. It's not about going how, how fast or how what's the ET or anything like that. It's about just the guys learning, everybody being safe, looking after our sponsors and um, just having a few skids and learning what we've got to do to drive this car. We're running a Alan Johnson wedge, um, it's a stage three. It's quite a bit of history with that motor as well, purpose-built alcohol motor. It's also running a PSI screw um, with um, a full MSD and Waterman system in it. There's, there's nothing fancy in there, it's just pretty much off-the-shelf stuff that you use for uh, alcohol racing. It's not many meetings, we only get five, five goes at this in the season, so we, like I say, we just want to learn how to drive this car and how to tune it and how to build it and how to repair it and how to maintain it and yeah. find out as bad as it works and have a bit of fun along the way. And when they did eventually work out how to get it off the line, with a half-track shutdown, a 908. Not bad. But Perry and anyone else with their sights on the door slammer title this summer is going to have to beat this guy, defending champion Ross Taylor and his 57 Chev. We've uh, made the decision this year to uh, carry on. I mean, we're not too worried if that, some of the other cars are not going to be there or turn up, but it looks, it's looking pretty healthy at the moment. There's, uh, for the natural series, we've got five, so that's uh, another couple from last year. And uh, so it looks like there's a bit of interest there. And uh, no, we're ready. Unfortunately, not down here today. We had a little bit of a a hiccup with a, um, a mag problem and uh, you just can't go buy one in New Zealand so um, we've missed out today so we'll have to get some uh, testing and probably uh, 
early next week or something. Because we um, wrecked the other engine, of course, we've got um, a nice new billet, shiny piece. Um, a TFX billet block this time in the car. New, uh, all new rods, um, like liners, cam, all that, that stuff. And we're just going through the car, every every nut and bolt of the car, every every wiring connection. We're just about let down most runs with just little stupid things um, upsetting the, the deal. Um, no, I'll give it uh, one more season. Uh, Jason is excellent on the crew, he, he's very aware and um, he's probably got a lot more patience than me. I've decided I'm still hanging around, I can still do more press ups than him, so I don't think I can, but we are going to campaign the blue car at the other Fram meetings, so that's good, so that'll give them a chance while we can concentrate on the national meetings. Yes, beautiful looking Cam uh, Camaro, and, this, and it's good to see those guys coming through. Uh, all the crew guys over there wrenching away. Um, I guess they'll, they'll just uh, they'll get out there and, the, and they'll find a combination of what's going to suit them, even on the start line, uh, getting the thing like their crew and their car just uh, all sorted out. It's all pretty hard work. It's all very well to go and watch a, 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 a seasoned crew on an overseas team, but uh, when you actually come to do it, it's a, a completely different story. Yes, drag racing, like all motorsport, is a team event. And Ross will be hoping that his team had get their combination right and take him to another national championship this summer. In our first series of NZV8 TV, we featured some of the young achievers of drag racing. People like Anthony Marsh, the driver of the world's fastest naturally aspirated rail car. Still chasing that elusive 200 mile an hour. Hopefully this year we want to get to mid six sevens, but main thing's that 200 mile an hour, which is, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. 199.17 so far, that was the old man, I've only done 197, but we're slowly creeping up on it, and uh, this season I think it's going to come, otherwise we have to do it in Aussie. Another young achiever and nearly top alcohol champion last summer is Todd Vincent. The last the end of last season was the yeah. obviously the national sitting here. Uh, first qualifying pass on the Saturday. We thought we'd go out and do a nice strong pass to get a lead on the qualifying. Qualifying number one, extra few points to get us ahead in the championship. And around 1,000 foot, we put uh, rods out either side of the engine and put some giant holes in the engine. And it was good night racing for the day. For the day. I saw my top alcohol championship disappear in the blink of an eye. That's part of the engine. Oh, and no. I sit it in my lap. It is all new. There's a few secret little bits that not too many people know about. It's basically the same gear again, just replace it all and try to get the combination going back to six O's, high five second passes again. Well, I should have won this season, but so it was to be. I came second, second was still a great debut season, top alcohol. I still believe that if I win this season, I am still the youngest top alcohol champion in New Zealand scene, so hopefully that's the plan again for the season. You know, speed may be huge, but if you, the ET is a big important thing, and it's whoever gets to the finish line first, no matter how fast you go, and it's whoever crosses the line. Yes, complicated in practice, but so simple in theory. Just get to the other end first. And the Century Uasa Power Series gets underway next weekend with the Northern Nationals from Fram Auto Light Dragway. NZV8 magazine, new issue out now. And the cover car is this absolutely stunning big block 1967 Pontiac. Fat bottom girls make the world go round and this XB Falcon Coupe is certainly doing its part. We all love the early Camaros. Let's see how the 2010 reincarnation stacks up. And we've got all the coverage of what was hot and what was not at the 2009 Speed Show. And all this fun on NZV8 TV has been brought to you by Smith's Group suppliers of leading automotive brands and NAC Insurance. Not quite standard? Well, neither are they. Check them out on nac.co.nz. And the answer to our question, a top fuel dragster uses four to five gallons of fuel for a quarter mile pass. That's the equivalent of 38 to 47 litres per kilometre. Yes, litres per kilometre.